Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, Northlight Images, and I'm going to try in this video to make a bit of sense of the Epson EcoTank printer model numbers. Um, I've had several to review now, and I'll be honest, and the numbers still confuse me to some extent. Certainly this one, the small Epson ET2850, I had to look at the number there. Um, I have a habit, I can easily transpose numbers in things and remembering the model names for these can be tricky. Um, and I couldn't tell you if you gave me a, a model number straight away, well certainly not before looking into this, as to what the capabilities are were and from the point of view that I'm looking at them, how useful they are for printing photos and artwork. Now I'm not going to consider really document feeders, uh, scanners, which some of them have, uh, all useful things, but I'm going to look at the number of inks and the types of inks. Um, I should say that these numbers also vary in different regions of the world. So these are the ones I was able to get from uh, Epson's UK site. Uh, they likely be similar in Europe. They could be slightly different in the US. Who knows? Um, there is someone somewhere at Epson who probably understands this inside out and can give you all the rationale behind it, but um, I don't know. So I'm going to try and make a bit of sense of what you've got here. You've got quite a range of printers under the EcoTank system, and the idea is the EcoTank ones, you top them up from a bottle of ink. Um, you can see on the front of any of these printers that they have little tanks and you can see how much ink is inside them. There's actually a visible indication of how much ink. Why would you use one of these? Well, it's to save on ink costs as much as anything. Um, you buy the ink in larger bottles, you top these up and, cure, and it does make them quite a bit cheaper. So we've got a range of printers. What are they aimed at? Well, we've got photo printers and that's this one here, the 8500, which is an A4 printer. Uh, we've got also the 8550, which I reviewed a while ago, which is the A3 version, A3 plus version, it's 13 inch width. Um, it's the same printer, but bigger. The ICC profiles for this work for that one as well. So they're interchangeable, but I've got reviews. I'll put notes to where I have done some reviews in the notes to this. And so if you're interested in specific printers, um, I'm, I'm not going to test all these printers. I would lose the will to live if I had to go through these, particularly this bottom range here. These are monochrome ones. These are replacements for laser printers. So what we've got is photo printers here. We've got small home office, home use printers going up into small business, business use and larger business type printers. They have a mixture of features in them and they also change different types of inks. And the types of ink make a difference to the types of photos and artwork you can print and the type of media that you can use. So if I look at the numbers here, this is the 28, 2850. 2850 that comes here. Um, makes it, this one has a scanner on it. If I look at the smaller numbers, the 2810, the 1810, they're the basic printer, they don't have a scanner on them. There's also whether they've got things like auto uh, document feeders on the top. So more office type functions. Once again, that's not something I ever really look at. Um, these ones are, uh, say, that as you go up the range, they become faster. So they do a few more prints per minute. They, they start up quicker, they, they run quicker. There are various other differences, but you'll have to wade through the specs to find that lot. I, I honestly don't know it. And um, I'm not that much of a printer and a to actually try and remember all these different specs and things. As I say, these bottom ones here, these are black and white ones. These are laser printer replacements. So from a straightforward printer, printer of scanner, printer of document feeder, and quite a high volume one. At the top here, we've got the larger business ones. Now these are larger printers, they're higher volumes. They may actually be of some use, but I'll, I'll look at some of the other features first. Which models are A3 Plus? Well, I said the 8550, which is the bigger version of this one, that's it. And what I've got here is there's a new one coming out, the 18100, and that is just an out-and-out -out photo printer. It has six dye inks, 
CMYK light cyan light magenta. I will be reviewing that as soon as I can get one to test because that is an out and out photo printer. It has no scanner on top. It has no document feeder or anything like that. It doesn't make any pretense at doing documenty type stuff, office type stuff. It's an out and out photo printer. The 8550 ink set is slightly different, but that's also a larger one. If I go up to other printers here, all of these are A4. If I go up here, the 15,000, we're at one here. Now that's a four color printer, that takes A3. That's an office type printer. It has a document feeder on the top, it does A3+. Plus. Uh, likewise, if I go right at the top here, the 16,600 and the 16,150, um, they're big office printers. They're the sort of stuff you'll have in a, you know, an office one and loads of people will use them and nobody will ever refill the paper when it runs out. So you've got, that's, for a, that's the size. What next? Well, the 8500, 8550, have a mix of pigment and dye inks. Now, I, when I first tested the 8550, I noticed that this meant that on some papers I could get exceedingly good results, particularly art papers, where the matte black worked well with the colors of the dye and gave you very good results. I say, you have to have a look at the reviews. I've got written reviews with detail in them and some videos as well. But here I've highlighted the ones which are dye and pigment combined. So we've got the 8550 and the 8500 here. So that has the black, then it has a photo black, and then it has cyan, magenta, yellow, and a gray ink. Now the gray ink on that does the effect of the lighter colors and it works that. But I did a video the other day about why you can't simply translate the number of inks to the functionality because it's the mix and how they use. So it can be, can be quite complicated. But the gist of this, if you're looking at Ecotank printers, which have that dye, connect, dye and pigment connection, then we've got the 8550, 8500, 15,000. Uh, and down the bottom here, we come to some four color printers. Now this includes this, the 2850, which has a pigment black. Now, pigment black works really well on plain paper. The dyes work on photo papers. The pigment black doesn't. That means that from this printer, if you want to print photos on matte art papers, matte papers, art papers, it prints very well because it uses all four colors. However, if you want to print photos on a glossy paper, it only uses the cyan, magenta, and yellow inks, and three inks is not enough for good looking results for photo printing. Now, if you're not that bothered about quality of photo printing and you wouldn't notice, then there's nothing wrong with these smaller printers. But if you want to do photo printing, you're more likely to look for a photo printer. So this, the 8500, is vastly better for photo printing than this. Um, this one has a scanner, does offer C type things. You'll notice too that as you go up market, this one's got quite a large screen on it and it's a touch screen. The screen on this one here is tiny. Um, and in fact, when I first got this printer, I had to get a magnifying glass out to actually read what was on the screen. It was that small. Even putting my stronger glasses on, I couldn't clearly read it. But that's why these ones are cheaper and these ones are more expensive. You know, that's what you get in a model range, as with anything. So features vary between them. So there we go. That's dye and pigment, which is quite an interesting mix. Dye and pigment here works really well for photo printing. Dye and pigment here, well, it has some issues. But as you go up the range, these are office printers. So if you have, somebody has a 15,000, you've got four inks with it. You get the same quality photo printing. It will print well on uh, matte media, but photo media, well, it, results are a little bit more variable. So that's the dye and pigment ink mix. As they say, wait, there's more. Now, what about just pigment ink? Turns out these big printers at the top here, which are four ink printers, they have cyan, magenta, yellow, and black pigment inks. They're all pigment inks. Now, they will, they're slightly different pigment inks, so they will print on, you can print photos on them. I've looked at a, an even larger printer, an Epson Workforce printer, and I'll put a link to that in the notes as well, which was the only printer of this sort I've looked where I could stack up multiple sheets of card to print on it. So 
if you are looking at printing cards and you want to print more than just the odd one or two, well, this, although it's an excellent printer and will print on card, looks good, you can't stack multiple sheets. So if somebody says, I want 10, 10 cards off you, you have to sit around and load sheets of card into it and take them out of it. When you look at these bigger printers, because they're designed for volume, they happen also with good ICC profiles to give quite good results on card and the like. Nobody would claim these are photo printers, they're not Lister. These are big office printers, so they cost a bit more in that respect. They're bulky, they work. Uh, yeah, they, those inks work nicely. I was quite surprised by the quality I was able to get out of it. Have a look at the review of it, and got a video and things of, it, of, of this, the big printer I tested like this quite surprised. So there we have the range of Epson EcoTank printers. Uh, well, current range. I mean, yeah, give us a couple of months and these number, model numbers could change. So you've got, just to sum summarise it, we've got black and white ones, which are replacements for lasers. We've got the range of tank printers that go from small basic printers, four ink, which is a pigment ink, or, or these, these ones are just, some, some of these ones are just all dyes. Um, and already I've confused myself because I can't remember exactly which ones of these are dye and pigment and which one. So I'll go back to the slide. Dye and pigment ink, and I can see that this one is a mix. So these smaller ones are dyes only. Now, I've been looking at this this morning at the specs and various things, and I'm forgetting it already, looking at this, trying to go through this sort of stuff. All I can say is that the photo printers are the ones that I would pick. And if you're looking for printing cards and the like, then some of these might be worth a look. Uh, but in general, it's the 8550, the 18100, um, you know, why that's a four digit number, that's a five digit number, who knows. But anyway, that's where the, uh, the photo printers are. And at that point, I will stop because otherwise I'm going to confuse myself even more. Yeah, it's not the best of numbering systems, Epson. Um, I know you've got lots of a, of a range and I can see how the features vary, but it would be nice if there was a, a simple approach. You go to Epson's uh, website and say, I want, want an EcoTank printer, at, and you'll get a vast range of them. Now, there is a thing called the tyranny of choice. And having this many models is not always the clearest of thing. They work nicely. And the nice thing, one nice bit is that even these basic models, the printer drivers, and I, I use Max for stuff, support color management, uh, which some of the other cheaper printers I've come across don't properly support color management. So they all have somewhere to fit if you want a printer. Um, I'm going to be just looking at the ones I think are best for people wanting to print photos and artwork. But if you want office functions, there is all kinds of stuff in them as well. Anyway, I hope that wasn't too confusing and it has helped a bit. Um, if you've got any questions, as long as they're not details of the specs of these, because you can look that up. Um, if you've got any questions, please do ask. Uh, it does, it's people asking me about this sort of stuff that gives me ideas for, for the videos. So there you go. Please do subscribe to the channel if you find it useful. Tell other people about it. And uh, thanks for watching.